Okay, so let's do this question. It says, um, calculate the maximum yield of sodium hypochlorite you would um, get if you started with a mass of sodium hydroxide of 28.4 milligrams. Okay, so let's try to do that problem. Okay, so I know you guys don't know all of your um, polyatomic ions yet, but sodium hypochlorite is this thing here. Okay, that's bleach. So it's actually a good one to kind of remember since bleach is such a common household substance. But anyways, so recall this is just like the last problem we did. In fact, it's the same reaction equation. So remember, with the reaction equation, it gives us, that reaction equation gives us kind of a conversion factor, right? So in this case, what did we want to do? We wanted to convert sodium hydroxide to sodium hypochlorite, right? So we have that mole to mole conversion, right? So let's just write that up here, just to remind ourselves. So for every two moles of sodium hydroxide that we get, if we have a maximum yield, that means 100% goes to product, right? We'll have one mole of the sodium hypochlorite. So, well, we've been presented with milligrams, which is a mass, but we got to convert that to moles. And we know a mass to mole conversion, which is called the molar mass, right? But that, the mass that the molar mass gives us is in grams, right? So we're going to have to convert milligrams to grams prior to using the molar mass conversion, okay? So, and we, we here, I shouldn't have erased it, but we wrote down the molar mass for sodium hydroxide last time. It was 40.00 grams per mole. Okay. So, one thing I am going to ask you, does anybody remember the conversion factor between milligrams and grams? 1,000 milligrams per gram. Yep, 1,000 milligrams per gram. If you don't remember that, something you're supposed to remember not going to be given to you. And I'm just going to use sodium hydroxide there as a placeholder because we're going to convert from the sodium hydroxides to the sodium hypochlorides. And remember, we want to do moles because we need to use that mole to mole conversion, right? So we're going to have to use the molar mass of sodium hydroxide. So on the bottom, 40. 0.00 grams of sodium hydroxide, and on the top, one mole of sodium hydroxide. That's going to cancel out grams of sodium hydroxide there. Now we have moles of sodium hydroxide, but we wanted grams of sodium hypochlorite, right? So we've got to figure out the number of moles of sodium hypochlorite first. So we've got this conversion factor here which is uh, two moles sodium hydroxide to one mole sodium hydrochloride. Okay, so that's going to cancel there. And remember, when we're talking about that maximum yield, that's implying you want the weight, okay? So, we're going to have to figure out something that converts moles of sodium hypochlorite to grams of sodium hypochlorite. And of course, we all know that's the molar mass by now, right? But we haven't figured it out for sodium hypochlorite yet. So let's just write down the units, and then we'll figure out the uh, numbers. Okay. So I'm just going to do this on the calculator. If you're having trouble figuring out molar mass, please again go back to those molar mass um, videos. So molar mass of sodium hypochlorite is going to be 22.99 plus 
So all we do is just go across, divide, okay? So 28.4 divided by 1,000, divide that by 40, divide that by 2, and then multiply that by 74.44. And, um, well, this is in grams. Why don't we convert that to milligrams, okay? So we'll get a number that is a little more presentable. Okay, so let's just convert it to milligrams for fun. So one gram of sodium hypochlorite is 1,000 milligram. So we're going to take that number and multiply it by 1,000. And I get a number that is 26.4. Okay, again, it didn't tell me to put it in milligrams or grams, for that matter, so I could have chosen whichever one I wanted. But I think this is an easier number to just look at and understand, you know, with those units. So um, I kind of like to do appropriate units. It wouldn't have been incorrect if you put 2.64 times 10 to the negative 2 grams either, okay? Um, so there was one other thing I wanted to say about this, and now I'm not remembering. Um, remember, oh, maximum yield, right? 100% of reactant goes to product. Okay, that's what maximum yield. What was the 80% yield you just multiply that by each? So 80% yield, yeah, you would take this as 100% yield and multiply that by 0.8, okay? I mean, we could do a formal count. That's like the... Well, I mean, you do Short way, you know. Thing, right? and yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we could, what we're going to do, the next problem is to do a percent yield problem, okay? Um, where I can actually show you to to cancel out with units, you know. But effectively, yeah, you're just going to multiply both points, okay? Well, how would you figure out the percent yield if you weren't given the percent yield? Um, so they would give you, have to give you the number of moles or the mass of the product too, okay? Any other questions? Those are both all good questions.